I have released a video covering RTX 4070 two days ago, but a big news story about the RTX 4070 release date just broke, so I just had to make an updated video to share this new information with you. If you have seen my previous video, then feel free to skip straight to the release date chapter using a timestamp in the description. But if you have not seen it yet, then let me tell you all about RTX 4070 specs, performance in games at 4K and 1440p resolutions, as well as release date, price, and why I think that AMD may be in trouble because of how well RTX 4070 is said to be positioned in the current GPU market conditions. But before that… CDKeyOffer.com is my number one choice for when I need to buy a cheap Microsoft software key. They are a reliable provider of affordable keys to me, my friends and the channel community for over two years now, so highly recommended. Use my discount code IVADIM to get 30% off an already amazing price and grab yourself a Windows 10 Pro for $16, Windows 11 Pro for $23 or Office 2021 for just $52. You can use PayPal for fast and secure payment and get your key instantly. Links to all these products are in the description below. Now back to our topic. Let's start with the specifications update. RTX 4070 has 5,888 CUDA cores, featuring a 2,475 MHz core clock boost, 46 ray tracing cores, and 12 GB of 21 Gigabit per second GDDR6X memory across a 192 bit bus for a total of 504 GB per second bandwidth. TDP is currently set to be 200 watts, however, I suspect that Nvidia may bump it up to 220 watts to squeeze out extra performance out of the card. This is a very nice improvement compared to its predecessor RTX 3070. By the way, RTX 3070 GPU chips were manufactured on Samsung 8 nanometer process, while 4070 uses the cutting edge TSMC 4 nanometer process which offers industry-leading power efficiency and performance advantage. This is a massive leap from a technology point of view. Also, 12GB of memory is a nice upgrade going into the future, as 8GB cards, such as RTX 3070, will be pushed out of 1440p gaming segment and become the norm for 1080p resolution in the coming years. Next, let's talk about the performance. Now that I know all the specifications down to the core clock speed, I can run my calculations to deliver a more accurate performance estimation for the RTX 4070. Let's start with the performance at 4K resolution. On average, RTX 4070 should deliver between RTX 3080 and 3080 Ti level of performance. That is about 76 FPS in a 16 game average. Next, I would like to show you how that would look like in some of the games you are likely familiar with. Expect close to 45 FPS average in Cyberpunk on high graphics preset at 4K. This result represents what I expect the upcoming AAA games will perform like on a 4070 in the next couple of years. So I think that RTX 4070 is not quite cut out to be a 4K gaming GPU if this is the type of games you plan on using it for, and do not wish to use DLSS to boost that FPS. By the way, it is a viable option as DLSS is pretty much in every game now. Next up is Shadow of the Tomb Raider on the highest quality preset, representing older AAA games which still look very nice. Expect to see close to 80 FPS in this title. If you enjoy the latest competitive shooters, then you will be pleased to hear that Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 should be able to run at about 112 FPS average at 4K using basic quality settings. Not quite enough for 120 plus FPS experience, but not too bad either. If you are enjoying this video, then a like and sub to the channel would be lovely. Now let's have a look at what RTX 4070 is expected to be able to do at 1440p resolution. It is much more impressive than at 4K, as I estimate that RTX 4070 will deliver performance level close to RTX 3090 or better at 1440p. RTX 4070 Ti has proven that Nvidia fixed its performance scaling at this resolution in the new ADA generation of graphics cards. That is why I expect to see about 96 FPS average in Cyberpunk on high graphics preset. 
This means that RTX 4070 should be able to run the upcoming AAA games at 60 plus FPS at 1440p resolution in most cases. If I was planning on gaming at this resolution, then I would wishlist RTX 4070 to do that job. Additionally, it should be great at running older games such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider at close to 150 FPS average. That is high refresh rate monitor territory right there. And I expect to see close to 185 FPS average in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on basic quality at 1440p. Very nice. So, the performance should be good, but the price will decide if this will be a good product to buy or not. Nvidia's upcoming GPU prices is the best guarded secret. While the specs managed to leak out due to the fact that too many people are involved in the graphics card's development, the prices almost never do because usually only the top Nvidia executives are in the loop on that information. That is true from what I have seen over the many years following this industry. But looking at how other RTX 40 series graphics cards are priced, I think it is safe to assume that most likely we will see RTX 4070 with a price tag close to $600. Well, I would love to see it keep the old RTX 3070 MSRP of $500, the realist in me knows that it is not going to happen. But is $600 a bad price in the current market conditions? If 4070 will manage to offer RTX 3090 level of performance for $600 at 1440p, then I think it is acceptable. And I think that AMD executives share my vision of the RTX 4070 price and performance. After all, RX 6950 XT is now discounted to $699 on AMD.com. Why is that, you might ask? I think it is because AMD is threatened by RTX 4070's launch. That is why the company is in a rush to discount and sell all the remaining RX 6950 XT and 6900 XT cards as soon as possible. While Radeon RX 6900 series cards may end up competing well with RTX 4070 in terms of raw raster performance, AMD cannot deny that 4070 has better ray tracing performance DLSS 3 and a much lower power consumption. Even if 4070 will end up having a 220 watt TDP, it is still much lower than RX 6900 XT with its 300 watts. Additionally, RTX 4070 is a cause for concern even if we look at AMD's upcoming RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT graphics cards. At 1440p, I expect RTX 4070 to be better than RX 7700 XT and maybe even tussle with RX 7800 XT. Of course, that is if AMD fails to fix the current RX 7000 series performance issue in the upcoming driver's updates. If they do fix it, then the picture will be different. Looks like that is one of the reasons why AMD has diverted all of its driver's development team resources towards fixing the RX 7000 series performance issue while neglecting RX 6000 series and older graphics cards since late November last year. That is a massive gap in driver's update schedule. Last but not least, the release date. According to the latest leaks, RTX 4070 is planned to enter mass production later this month. If that is correct, then we should expect it to launch this spring. Additionally, Videocards.com managed to get their hands on an NVIDIA embargo timeline document, which the company has shared with one of its board partners. The document states that RTX 4070 is planned to launch in April, no exact date though. Just to be clear, in the past some embargoes were completely changed, pushed back or even cancelled, so anything is possible between now and April. Also, sometimes Nvidia gives their partners wrong information on purpose to try and catch the person on the inside who is leaking the information. But in my opinion, April release date is very plausible. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the exact launch date, like the video if you enjoyed it, and talk to me about the RTX 4070 in the comments below. It was I, Vadim, until next time.